have to do two things. One, we have to do good deeds. So whatever we're doing should be good. And good is not just what you and I think is good, it is what has been defined in the Quran as good. And secondly, we have to do so with sincerity. Our motivation has to be right in doing so. Once these two issues or components come together, then inshallah, that is the deed that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting and may He guide us and help us to observe the fast in a manner that is pleasing to Him because once He is pleased, He will accept inshallah. Now, brothers and sisters, I know we've uh, started the series even before Ramadan began about Ramadan and about fasting. What I would like to do today and perhaps in another session or two is to talk about the blessings of Ramadan. Often we hear about Ramadan being a blessed month. People talk about the blessed month of Ramadan. But the question is, how exactly is Ramadan a blessed month? Well, there are a couple of things that stand out. Uh, to begin with though, if you were to look at the meaning of the word blessed or blessing, you will realize that this word blessed actually has two meanings. One we're all familiar with. When I say I am blessed, the idea that comes to the mind of everyone who hears the statement is I must be enjoying certain bounties or graces. In other words, we associate, uh, we associate being blessed with happiness, with welfare. But another meaning of the word blessed is to exalt and to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> So when we say that Ramadan is a blessed month, both meanings are actually very relevant to this month, brothers and sisters. In this month, we glorify and we magnify and exalt and should exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah tells us in verse 185 of Surah Al-Baqarah when He talked about fasting. Allah says at the beginning of the verse, and I will go through the whole verse so you can see the connection. Allah says, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. The month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed as guidance from mankind and as evidence that it is guidance and it is the criterion. That is, it is it is able to show us what is right from what is wrong. فمن شهد منكم شهر فليصوم. So whoever witnesses the month must fast it. وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ And whoever is traveling or is ill, then same number of days and other days that are missed in Ramadan. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah wants ease for you and He does not want hardships for you. وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةِ And so that you may complete the number of days, 29 or 30 days of fasting, وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ And so that you will also magnify or exalt or glorify Allah for the guidance He has given to you. وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ Allah says at the beginning of the verse, so whoever witnesses the month should fast it. Why? Here is one reason why. That we should glorify and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the question is, how can we achieve this? I mean, it's one thing to talk theoretically about glorifying God and praising God. How do we practically do this? Well, there are a couple of things. Number one, <clears throat> by fasting. When we fast, we are in effect glorifying and exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, Allah the Exalted tells us in a hadith Qudsi in Sahih al-Bukhari, he, he talks about the fasting person and he says, that the fasting person has left his food and drink and his desires for my sake. This is how we exalt Allah the Creator. That for His sake and His pleasure, we willingly and we intentionally stay away from food and drink and desires. All because of the pleasure of Allah, because of that awareness we have of Allah. 
Then Allah continues to say in this hadith Qudsi, the fast is for me and I will reward it. And the reward of a good deed is multiplied ten times. Hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Allah says about the fasting person, he has left his food and drink and desires for my sake. The fast is for me and I will reward it. And the reward of the good deed is multiplied ten times. So one way of exalting Allah the Creator is to fast in Ramadan. Now you might say, but we can do the same in other months. That is true, we can fast in other months. The thing is though, in Ramadan it is compulsory to fast. So whether we like it or not, we fast or have to fast. On the other months, it's not compulsory, so we, most times we choose not to fast. So in theory, it can happen in other months, but in practice, it doesn't happen that often. How often do we fast outside of Ramadan? MashaAllah, there are some of us who do that, perhaps on a regular basis, Mondays and Thursdays, things like that. But in Ramadan, it is the one month where we fast on a regular basis, day after day, until the month is completed. And so this is one way of exalting the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala because in our fast, we must be aware of Allah in order to avoid the things that are sinful. The second way we can also glorify Allah the Exalted is to pray additional voluntary prayers. In Ramadan, we have Salatul Taraweeh. This is a special Nafal prayer that is only performed in Ramadan, we know this. Only in Ramadan. The Prophet والسلام, said in the hadith in Sahih al Bukhari, Man qama Ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufir ulahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. Whoever prays in the nights of Ramadan. And this praying here is not the regular prayers, right? The five daily prayers. Because that we do all the time. But in Ramadan, we do something extra. And that is the taraweeh prayers. And this is one way also of glorifying and, and, and magnifying and exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because remember, Allah says in that verse 185, That you may do takbir. That is the exaltation of Allah the Creator. <clears throat> we also magnify and glorify Allah by doing good things. I know we don't really think about it in this way. But every time we consciously do something good, that is exaltation of Allah. Because as Muslims, we're doing it to please Allah. And in doing so, we have to have consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taqwa Allah, and this is glorification of Allah. We also do the same by avoiding sinful things. When we fast, all of us, brothers and sisters, we make a conscious effort to avoid sinful things. So in Ramadan, when we walk on the streets, especially these days when the temperature is high, and a lot of people walk half naked on the streets, we make a conscious effort to avert our eyes, to look down, to look away. Outside of Ramadan, we may take that second look, sometimes even a third look. But in Ramadan, we're more conscious, alhamdulillah. May Allah just make us more conscious all the time. But in Ramadan, we are more conscious, so we avert the eyes, we turn away. And we do so deliberately, consciously, knowingly. It's not just happening and we don't really know what's happening. We make that effort, that conscious effort, to avoid things that are sinful. And this also takes consciousness of Allah. And so again, in this manner, we exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As you can see from these things, brothers and sisters, Glorifying Allah and praising Him and uh, revering Him and so on really comes down to being obedient to Him. Once a person is obedient to Allah, that person is exalting Allah the Creator. But in the verse, Allah says, And so that you may magnify and glorify Allah for the guidance that He has given to you or the guidance He has guided you to. Number one, we glorify Allah for being Muslims in the first place, for having guided us to Islam, or else we would be something else. And we know where everything else is leading. On top of that though, we also thank Allah
for guiding us to be practicing Muslims. For there are many Muslims who are simply Muslims by name. Or they say they associate with Islam and Muslims. But they don't practice. And we all, of course, practice at various levels. So we should glorify Allah for the guidance that has made us conscious enough to practice Islam at a higher level. To, to, to strive to live it in our lives. To make it become a reality in our own attitudes and behaviors. Now this is how we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the meanings of the blessed month of Ramadan. It's blessed in this way. It allows us all these opportunities to actually glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can do all these things out of Ramadan, remember that. But there is not so much of an incentive per se to do it outside of Ramadan. But in Ramadan, mashallah, and we can see that. We can see that, I mean, in Ramadan, the masjid is, is much, uh, has much more people for salah. And even if you may not come, you know, outside of Ramadan regularly for salat al dhuhr we still welcome everyone at the masjid. And we pray that you will continue to come. Even if it's Ramadan alone, you come to the masjid. And, and any other time. And we hope that by coming to the masjid, if, inshallah, if not this year, maybe next year, but inshallah, by coming to the masjid, even if you start off with Ramadan for Dhuhr, that this, this awareness will, will grow and become larger so that perhaps our brothers and our sisters will make a greater effort to come to the masjid for Dhuhr outside of Ramadan as well. But let's talk a little bit in the few minutes we have left about blessing from the perspective that all of us understand when we hear the word. And that is, what is in it for us? Like, what good can I get out of it? Because when I say I'm blessed, I'm not talking about difficulties. I'm not talking about trials. I'm not talking about hardships. I'm talking about a good life, an easy life, a comfortable life that I'm enjoying, right? So I'm happy and I'm pleased. Well, the first thing, and there are a number of things I would like to share with you. The first thing is our community. I know this is one thing we may not always think about, but our community is a major blessing for us in Ramadan. How? Because in Ramadan, we tend to come together. In larger numbers for Salah, we come together at Iftar time. We come together for Taraweeh as well in the night. And it is only Ramadan that has brought us together, MashaAllah, in this large number. Outside of Ramadan, we do come, but not in this sort of large numbers. But the question is, brothers and sisters, will Ramadan come and then leave us? Although we gather for iftar, and we gather for salah, and we gather for taraweeh, will Ramadan still leave us while we have made no new friends? We have learned no new names of, of brothers and sisters we have not met before? Or will we use this opportunity to perhaps every day Try to meet a person you have not met before. Someone you may consider a stranger in the crowd. Because our tendency is to meet the people that we already know. But we should perhaps make it an effort or a goal for Ramadan to meet all the people we know, mashaAllah, but to meet at least one new person. Go up to them, shake their hands, greet them, and exchange some pleasant words. So Ramadan will bring us together, but will this, will this togetherness be strengthened? Will this bond be strong enough so that after Ramadan we still have the connection? Or will Ramadan end and we go back to being sort of strangers or individuals just coming to pray and then we leave? Another blessing of Ramadan is our families. Because in Ramadan many families make the effort to eat suhoor together, to fast together, to pray together, to do iftar together, and to even go to the masjid together for taraweeh, isha and taraweeh. So Ramadan has brought the family closer together. We do things together. But will this endure after Ramadan? Or will our televisions our computers, the internet, Netflix, video games and movies, will these things become the barriers or the separators 
that will make strangers out of individuals living in the same home. Alhamdulillah, Ramadan has removed these barriers, or hopefully, and families ought to actually spend quality time together, eating, breaking the fast, doing suhoor, iftar, going to the masjid together, perhaps sitting down a little bit and chatting. Will this end though after Ramadan? And with all these distractions that, that, that Alhamdulillah, Ramadan has I hope removed from our lives in our homes, will these distractions become barriers again whereby members of the same family actually live as if they're strangers now? You pass each other on the way out of the house, in and out of the house. You don't spend time again eating a meal, talking uh, about the various things. So this is a major blessing of Ramadan and we pray that this togetherness and this closeness will continue and endure after Ramadan. Another major blessing of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, is forgiveness of our sins. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always accessible. He never goes into hiding or seclusion. And so every day of the year, every hour of the year, every moment of our lives, whether we're in Ramadan or not, we still can access Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connect with Him. However, Allah the Exalted has chosen Ramadan for extra special virtues and blessings. He has given us greater opportunities of achieving forgiveness of our sins. And we do so in the following ways. Number one, by fasting. See, by fasting we glorify Allah and exalt Him. At the same time, it is a means of forgiveness of our sins. How? The Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ صَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ دَمْهِ Whoever fasts in Ramadan with sincere devotion, this is the motivation here, the niyyah as we say, and hoping for a reward only from Allah, and these two statements together really clarify for us what the motivation should be. Whoever does this, whoever fasts in Ramadan with sincere devotion and hoping for a reward only from Allah, will have all his or her previous sins forgiven. Not just the sins for the previous year or the previous five years or the last ten years, brothers and sisters, but all the previous sins by fasting in Ramadan with sincerity. We also can achieve the same by praying additional voluntary prayers in Ramadan. We call it Taraweeh, or if you choose to get up at the Hajj time. Because the Prophet ﷺ also said in the Hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانَ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِ Whoever prays in the nights of Ramadan with sincere devotion and hoping for a reward only from Allah will have all his or her previous sins forgiven. So he said the same thing about fasting in Ramadan. He said the same thing about praying in the nights of Ramadan. And he also said the same thing about praying in Laylatul Qadr, brothers and sisters. Man qama Laylatul Qadr imanan wahtisaban, ghufir Allahu ma taqaddam min dambi. Whoever prays in in the night of power with sincere devotion and hoping for a reward only from Allah will have all his or her previous sins forgiven. This is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the month of Ramadan. Whether we fast and we pray in the night time and we also pray and observe Laylatul Qadr, we, we can achieve this tremendous blessing of having all our sins from now way back till maybe we, we hit puberty. All the sins for all these years erased simply uh, by the virtue of this great month that Allah has blessed us with. We need to understand this. There are other blessings we need to talk about, but we're out of time. And inshallah, we'll continue in, in, in our next uh, uh, session with some more of these blessings uh, of Ramadan that we should strive to achieve. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message He has revealed. And may He inspire us all to live by this message. May Allah help us to achieve the virtues and the blessings of Ramadan and the objectives of fasting in Ramadan. And may He accept from us our fasting, our prayers, our du'as, and all our good deeds. And may He motivate us to also seek to do good deeds 
to think about what next we can do for ourselves or anyone else. And may He also help us to avoid all the things that are sinful and that are evil. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum. Please don't forget to pay your sadaqatul fitr as soon as possible. The earlier the masjid receives it, the, the, the earlier they can disburse these funds to the uh, brothers and sisters who are less fortunate so that they can also be able to enjoy and celebrate Eid al-Fitr insha'Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.